Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. I I haven't made a lot of videos about the, the ridiculous Snyder Cut and the fact that it's even getting time and, and press these days. I mean, it's a lame duck universe, right? Um, but Warner Brothers, you know, you always have to be on your guard because Warner Brothers, they'll just go with anything they think will work at any given time. It's 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 so disturbing to me, and it's mind-boggling to me why this is even a thing, and how people out there actually try to defend the Snyder cut, the Snyder's universe, and his his view of these characters. It's I can't even fathom how people can do this. In fact, I said on my my Facebook group the other day that I usually don't go this far with fandoms, but I'm to the point honestly where I don't even want to be around people who try to defend this garbage, who try to say that Snyder's view of these universe, these characters is valid. At best, best case scenario, these people are just deluded. They don't really understand who the characters are or how much effect they actually have on culture and they just kind of think something's cool and they're just kind of going with the cool group or whatever. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario though, as we've seen exhibited by the Snyder Bros time and time again, you know, on my videos, you know, when, when they're trolling uh, videos, that they'll go back and they'll go out and search the internet and scour for anybody who dares uh, dissent or give them any um, kickback on their own platforms, doesn't matter. And they will troll you to the dust if they can. That's the kind of behavior that, that these characters, the Snyder's view of these characters, that's the kind of behavior that Snyder's characters inspire. Snyder's not interested in telling superhero stories. The the story you get time and time and again from uh, from a lot of Snyder defenders is well I you know I didn't care about Superman until I saw Man of Steel. He made me care about well he didn't make you care about Superman then. He presented a new character, little emo Hamlet, who is whiny, doesn't know what he can do, if he should do, goes too far, blah blah blah. That's the character you like then. You don't like Superman, as I say in that thumbnail. That Snyder Superman does not in any way equal. Not just Christopher Reeve, not just George Reeves, not just any one incarnation of Superman we've had, but the entirety of Superman in the past. And the fact that people will stand up and say, that, that's why I like it. Well, okay, then you prove my point. You don't like Superman. You want this super dark man. You want emo Hamlet that Snyder gives you. And I've got a lot to say about Snyder's uh, twisted, twisted, um, Randian view of, of Christianity and Christian principles. The man's a dark He's a damaged individual. Um, I can't say that completely. I don't know the man personally. But you, you know that if someone is consistently producing this kind of twisted and, and, uh, and, and desperate nihilistic art again and again and again, obviously there's something, there's something going on inside of that person. And, and uh, if, if you're somebody who wants to surround yourself by that art time and time and again, as I say on my channel, it's the mantra of my channel, we are a product of the stories we tell ourselves, but we're also a product of the stories we choose to spend our time around. You know, you don't want to go spend your time around somebody who's constantly uh, listening to music or watching movies or whatever that is talking about, you know, killing the world and, and you know, death and anger and blah, blah, blah. Who's got time for that, you know? Um, so... What a, the, the point I want to get at here first is that this is a, uh, a, a, it's a silly defense, but it's one that's common, and I understand that people, if they haven't watched my channel for a while, they don't know. But there's this common defense. Look, it's just a version of the character. Okay, so you don't like that version. Okay, well, you know, you like your versions, and we'll like our version. No, no, no. Stop it with this version defense. You can't take any mythological character. There are certain variances with any, any iconic mythological character that you can make. Okay, so there is an argument for versions, right? So you can take, for example, the, the Silver Age version of Superman, whose universe is a little bit different than, say, the, the post-crisis Superman or whatever. You know, you can, you, can think, you can do things like that. You can talk about the Superman versions of the character on this alternate Earth or this alternate Earth. Sure, but once you take the core of the character, once you take the unities of the character, throw them out the window and start monkeying with them, well, what would it be like if Superman did kill? Well, what would it be like if Superman did do that? If he was kind of whiny and mopey and, and wasn't sure about saving people, and you know, what would it be like? Well, then you no longer have the character. That's what it'll be like. You no longer have Superman. With, with this whole version nonsense argument, 
the character in Brightburn might as well just be another Superman. Well, it's just a version of Superman. I mean, they don't call him Superman, but it's just a version of Superman. That's ridiculous. That's utterly ridiculous. That's not how mythology works. You can have variances. You can have... Uh, Oh, I forget the uh, the poet in Greek mythology who wrote a lot of the epic uh, epic poems for athletes and whatnot. I keep wanting to say Pliny, but uh, Pliny, but that's a that's a philosopher. Anyway, he wrote a uh, Pindar, maybe he wrote a a version a poem of Heracles in which he was trying to liken his patron, this this athlete that he was writing the poem for, to Heracles. So he talked about Heracles and the fact that Heracles was also very short, you know, Hercules. Well, that's never in any of the case in any of the art or any of the poetry before. Hercules is always depicted as a tall, strong man. But okay, for that version, for that for that poem, for that man, okay, he could be a little shorter. So something like height, something like that doesn't that's not the, the, the end of the character. That doesn't really affect the unities of the character. But you can't turn around and, and talk about this version of Hercules who actually uh conquered Hades and is the new Lord of the Dead. What? That's not Hercules. That's not anything about his story or what he should do, right? You can't go that far. You can't do that. So when Snyder tries to take these characters like Superman, well, what would it be like if he did kill? It'd be stupid, and it wouldn't be Superman. That's what it would be like. What would it be like if he was just kind of sad? And what would it be like if the world didn't really respond to him? I mean, some people can respond to him in hope, but a lot of people are really terrified. Well, that's not Superman's world. That's not the Superman character. It's not the world that he inhabits at all, at all. And that's what Snyder wanted to do from the get-go. Now, one more thing before I get into this. Another silly argument that people try to come up with, and I hear it again and again. Ever since Man of Steel came out, I've been hearing this silly argument. Clearly, you don't read comics because this and that came right from the comics. Clearly, you've only read like three comics in your life then. Yes, you can point to this or that instance in comics where certain things that Snyder did came from. Superman deciding to kill Zod, for example. But any of those instances that you point to in the comics were really, either one, really stupid choices that were badly received by the public, they were controversial, they shouldn't have been done, or, and or, could be both, usually is, they were completely taken out of context. So yeah, John Byrne, as great as John Byrne run was in Superman, uh, he made some boneheaded decisions in that, Absolutely. I think that's just obvious, anybody looking at it. And one of them was when he was disenfranchised with DC and he was getting off of the character and, and mad about some some uh, official licensing, imaging of the character or whatever. And he had Superman not twist a neck, not do anything like that. It was an alternate universe is odd that he opened up some kryptonite or whatever and destroyed them. It was ridiculous. It was a stupid move. Superman would never do that. And, and fans said so at that moment. And... You know, that character, the Superman, like, went on this sort of self-imposed exile afterwards because he knew how horrible he was. What does Snyder do? Snyder takes this ridiculously controversial moment that's not in keeping with Superman. I'm going to put it in my movie, and, well, he'll cry a little bit after, but then that'll teach him to be a better hero. No, it doesn't. That's not how this works. Stop it. Stop it. Stop pretending. So, let me get to, to, to what I, I've, I've mentioned this on my channel before. I've talked about this, but this really is from Snyder's mindset. This is how he thought long before he got his hands on the DC Universe and how he still thinks, and we see that from the ridiculous marketing images that we're seeing from the, DC, uh, from the Snyder Cut nonsense. He was interviewed when he was doing The Watchmen and Nolan was still doing the Batman movies. And I'll, I'll put a link to this. I've got it up on the screen there, but I'll put a link to it in the... Uh, this is one of the, the stories that covered it, but a link to it in the description. He said, everyone says about Batman Begins, Batman's dark. I'm like, okay, no, Batman's cool. He gets to go to Tibetan Monastery and be trained by ninjas, okay? I want to do that, but he doesn't, like, get raped in prison. That could happen in my movie. If you want to talk about dark, that's how that would go. And some idiot at Warner Brothers said, that guy should do a Superman movie. <laughs> and, 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 a, and a contingent of people in the public think, yeah, that's cool. No, no, that's stupid. That is, that's just, that, that, that's mind-numbingly ridiculous. Why? You can't take one of our precious few aspirational heroes and completely remake him into a murdering, whiny, emo Hamlet psychopath. And then in the next movie, suddenly turn around and pretend that some people find him inspirational. No, they don't. You've, you've given no reason for that. There's no justification in your world that you've created for that. 
everybody talks about how Justice League was was ridiculous. You know, Joss Whedon's Justice League when it suddenly just tried to pretend that Superman had been hopeful and inspirational. Well, you already got that stupid leap in logic in Batman v Superman when suddenly people are are inspired and Superman he shows up to save people and he looks sad, he looks careworn. It's like I just don't know if it's the right thing to do and I'm doing it, but is it right? No, these people look to me for hope and leadership. Is that really right? It's stupid, and people who try to say that Snyder's cut's gonna fix it, you know, you'll see that he's gonna become the character that you want him. No, no. That's not how aspirational heroes work. You don't become the aspirational hero. Maybe that's all you can conceive of. Maybe all you can conceive of and relate to are cathartic motivational heroes. Okay, fine. There are a million of them out there. Go watch one of their movies. Stop trying to argue and support and push the, the deconstruction of our precious few aspirational heroes into cathartic motivational just so you can better relate to them. We need that aspirational, as I've said many, many times, we need that aspirational standard. Hi, we'll never reach it in this light. You know, we can never be as good as some of these aspirational characters, but we need to have that standard before us to strive that high anyhow. If we just keep bringing that standard down, human nature is we just won't try that hard anymore until we've got the standard right down there with us. Someone who perfectly reflects us, in effect, is no longer a superhero. They're just like us. We, we don't want to be challenged anymore. We just want to be told that what we're doing now is okay. We see this. This is... There is, even though sometimes a lot of the Snyder bros will, will fashion themselves as very anti-SJW ideology, they're s perfectly in line with their methods. Uh, you know, the body positivity movement. Let's not, let's not look at any sort of healthy, um, positive standards that we might want to work towards. Let's just say that whatever we are like right now is good. It's the same thing they're doing with morals in the Snyderverse, trying to rip down that character. Let's just, I don't want to be challenged. I don't want to say I need to be better. I want to be told that everything I'm doing right now is perfectly fine. That's what this Snyderverse universe does. Snyder himself and the marketing that's come out with this, it's been really ridiculous. And I think that, that Snyder to some degree knows, he's got to know, that once this is released, that's it. That's it for him. Everybody else, people who are actually going to sit through this this piece of garbage, is two hour and three hour or something. I don't know. It's a ridiculous amount of time. No one's going to sit through that darkness, that slog through that nonsense. His his twisted, Randian view of of Christian iconography. It's not any kind of proper use of this iconography and mythological standards. It's it's he's an iconoclast, is what he is. You you um. We get it. We get it. You think Superman's a Christ figure. Well, there is a Christ figure element to the character of Superman, just as there is a Moses figure, as there is a Sun God Apollo figure, and so forth. But he didn't develop any of them. He just uses the iconography, which goes with what we've been saying for the longest time. Snyder is a visual artist. He's not a storyteller. The man doesn't know how to tell a story. Any of his films that got a pass in story were because they were already based on a solidly built uh, script or are preconceived story, you know, like The Watchmen or something like that, which happened to be tailor-made for his dark view of the universe and the world. This is the, the, that image that came out of the Joker as Jesus. This is shock value. This is shock value. Snyder knew what that image was going to do. He wants to shock people. What does it mean when a writer relies on shock value that they don't have any substance to rely on? They don't have the substance to rely on. They just want to shock you. They want to uh, bring you in. They want to make up as, to bring up much of a buzz as possible to get people interested to maybe come check it out. There's no substance to Zack Snyder's art as a filmmaker. He's a visual artist paired with a decent script that happens to flow in the nihilistic themes that he that he gives himself to, like Watchmen. Okay, sure. He's not a storyteller. He doesn't know how to tell a story. I've talked to my channel, too, about the lost art of writing in Hollywood. Snyder's an, a grade-A example of that. He doesn't know how to write, and, he, and he's paired with, uh, with, with writers like David Goyer or, um, or these other writers that, that just don't prove themselves either. Or, or when they're working under him, they have to just uh, dumb down their, their, uh, their talent, you know, due to the director's orders and whatnot. This is... Uh, Stop calling this the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. I'm, I'm glad that people shorthand are just calling it the Snyder Cut. That's right, because that's all it is. It's not the Justice League. It's not Superman. It's not Batman. It's not Wonder Woman. It's not any of these characters. This is Snyder's darkly perverse, nihilistic view of how we should deconstruct 
superheroes to just reflect our world, not challenge us to be any better, just reflect our world and kind of glory in that and say, yeah, yeah, we're okay the way we are. Look around. That's not, that's not the case. And it, if there was ever a time in which we needed heroes, heroes to come and inspire us to be better, it's now. But, but Warner Brothers is going to keep going with this nonsense. And Warner Brothers thinks that everything's fine. As long, you know, different versions. Warner Brothers fully buys into this nonsense argument of versions and, and the multiverse and all this nonsense. Lois and Clark. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Not even the uh, fan man told me, I, I refuse to watch the garbage. Fan man watched a bit of it and he said, uh, in, not even in the first 20 minutes or so, you've got Superman, you know, oh, it's just I'm bowing under the weight of having to be Superman. No! No! That's not the character. And the fact that Warner Brothers is just sort of flowing anything they can against the wall and whatever sticks fine you know i'm excited that we're going to get the superman 78 comic that's great but i don't think that's that's not due to any change in warner brothers that's just due to them doing as usual flinging stuff against the wall to see whatever sticks and and you know hey sure that'll get some money then whatever they're not going to learn anything they don't believe in these characters and they're perfectly content with tearing out the character's place in society that's the thing because i i teach you know and i teach um you know, 18 to, to early 20 year olds in college, and they don't, you know, unless they're fans of the, the movies, unless they've actually watched the old movies or they've read the old comics, they don't know who Superman is. To them, Superman, yeah, he's that whiny guy, he's Cavill. You know, he's really cut and buff, but he's kind of sad all the time. You know, Batman, Batman's a killer to them. That's all they know, because they don't, and as the older generation dies off, who does know who these characters are and do resonate with them, what we're going to see is we're going to see Superman going the way of the Lone Ranger going the way of Zorro, characters that meant a lot, uh, very much a lot to their, to, their, uh, to their generation. But because there was no new iconic portrayals of them that really took and hooked into society and culture, they just fell from cultural memory. It's, it's inconceivable that that could happen to Superman because at, decades after decades, the character was there. All the different versions, you know, like on my thumbnail, I've, a lot of different versions of the character are there on the right side, which do differ from each other, but they never betrayed the unities of the character. They're always there and staying true to who the character is completely and, and who he is in the beginning, who he, who he was molded by the public to become. That's Superman. It wasn't until Dan DiDio, genius Dan DiDio, decided to enforce a change with the New 52. He wanted to see Superman darker. He wanted to see Superman more like Batman. Most boneheaded idea ever. And it was because of him enforcing that change and pushing that change so long and then, and then retconning everything that was great about Rebirth and pushing that change in again with, uh, with Bendis. That's the influence. That's what, that's what Snyder was able to draw on. That's why you'll hear people say, no, it's like the New 52. Well, yeah, the New 52 was garbage. That's not Superman either. They, they've, they've successfully, at this point, they've successfully deconstructed Superman in the public consciousness. Now, not widespread people like me and people you know everywhere will, will always remember what the character should stand for but unless we do have a reassertion of who the iconic superman is these nonsense dark takes on the character will just kill him off no one will care snyder superman doesn't fulfill any cultural function it, it gives people a, a whatever little giddy they get out of watching some nihilistic dark garbage uh grotesque you know um perversion that uh, images and, and everything that Snyder gives them, they'll get whatever jollies they want off of that, but then they don't care. Superman's nothing to them after that. That's what these dark versions, that's what Lois and Clark, that's just, that's just going to make Superman into a sad, sappy, uh, gender deconstruction positive, you know, the, 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 no, the usual nonsense of the CW shows now. It's just deconstructing the character and it's ripping them out of their place in consciousness, so they won't be around unless we have a good reassertion of the character. Will that happen? I don't know. I don't know. It's sad. I think, you know, as I've said before, that's why we need to concentrate on, on providing our own positive analogs and our own, uh, our own characters. You know, Warner Brothers might still own the copyright to Superman, but they don't own the copyright to the aspirational hero. So, yeah. This is, I don't make a lot of the videos about the Snyder Cut because it's just pointless. It's stupid. Um, but it's important to speak out against it from time to time because Warner Brothers is that dense. They will think, oh, you know, if people are really talking about it. Maybe we should do more. And heaven knows they do not need to do more. The Snyder Cut needs to die. It needs to tank in ratings. It needs to uh, tank in reviews. Um, 
you know, the Snyder Bros will fight everything against that because they've already decided that this is wonderful. They haven't seen it yet, and it's wonderful, you know. Um, they don't have any basis for that. But you can you can base off of what you know about Snyder's version that that's not the right portrayal of the characters. So I'll stop right there. I'll end up just repeating myself. But that's all for now. I'll be back with more of the usual. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love.